Here with Reaction, author of Ethical Machines, Reed Blackman. Reed, thanks for being here. My, my pleasure. So what do you make of her thesis, that if they don't draw the line now, the machines are taking it all over? It's not crazy. I mean, I wouldn't say machines or robots. That makes it sound a bit too fantastical. But we're all familiar with things like deep fakes or uh, actors or uh, models that don't actually exist. Those are real. And we can, we can create also audio and video with them. And so there is a replacement uh, worry, absolutely. What? So I have a question. I'm a radiologist, my day job, and mm. so AI taking over radiology is a concern um, in my profession. And so, but one of the things that my question is, I understand that they want to have rights to this biometric data yeah. that she's talking about, but how far will that go? Because if you start giving them, you know, financial rights or even just intellectual property rights to their biometric data, I mean, does that go to every other industry? It's a great question. I mean, there's some places, especially in Europe, where you have ownership of your biometric data. You, you can't just, I can't just take what your biometric mean? data. So biometric data is what you look like, what you sound like. So I, you know, you've got, we've got how many hours of footage mm -hmm. of you, right? The AI people can recreate your face. They can recreate how you sound. They can recreate how you look. That's all what's called biometric data. Mm -hmm. So we can make what gets called a digital twin of you, swap you out, take you out, put in your digital twin, and uh, you're out of a job. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it, does, it does seem... That's interesting. It, I can understand. I mean, So why, essentially, yeah. we, you keep hosting the show into perpetuity, but you're long gone. <laughs> you have gone forever. Oh, yeah. All your data's already had. I mean, it's, it's already out there, right? So anyone can scrape YouTube, right? I could be the Fox and we can host forever. But you won't be paid <laughs> it for it. It won't be you, and right. Oh, 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 never age. A never and age? And then here's the Amazing. other thing, though. If you object to that, right? You say, look, that's my data. You're not allowed to take it. First of all, it's too late. That ship has sailed for you. Um, but even if you make that stand, just like the actors, the other possibility is that they just fabricate actors, right? We don't need... Sure. exactly your face and exactly your voice we'll just create ones that are really good and appealing right so india like a, recently created a news anchor that's totally virtual and so they say she's brilliant she's beautiful uh she's compelling so they can create that it's completely a lot easier to get her to rap when they want her to stop talking <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, we go well beyond our time markers here on fox well Fritz. actually says to just not, not listen to them just ignore the that's rats. right that's right virtual <laughs> but, um, employees are very compliant no but reed so this is okay maybe this is a bit deeper I, I'm gonna apply it to the writers, although it would apply to the actors as yeah. well. You would think that creativity is a uniquely human thing to, to behold, sure. creativity. Um, what does it say if you can replace human writers with AI writers? Does it say something about the quality of AI, or does it in fact say something about us and how formulaic we have become and what we create? Yeah, both. Look, I mean, I don't think we're anywhere, I think this is right, we're anywhere near having AI create the best incredible you know, drama, comedy series, et cetera. It's just not that good yet. But it can make a lot of der derivative things that are not very good, like the Hollywood movies that you don't want to watch. I saw in the previous <laughs> segment you said, I don't watch Hollywood movies, presumably because you think it's just not very good. Um, and AI can right now create not very good things. You get some, you can have fewer writers tweak what the AI has. Sure. So maybe you don't eliminate the writers, but you have them play a different kind of role. They're more akin to something like creative directors who take what the junior person creates and tweaks it, right? But instead of having a junior person do it, you have an AI do it instead. But then you have fewer jobs for humans. Correct. Which is a problem. Where do I order up a better and more compelling Will King? You, you might. That you can't. I yeah. can't? <laughs> yeah, you have Good to say luck. it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. Yeah. All right, Reed, it's always a fascinating and terrifying conversation. But yeah, it's like Uber. It's <laughs> yeah, all, right. this, hold on real quick. Is this almost like Uber and Lyft where, like, the cab drivers complain, but the ship's sailing? Yeah. Like, you better adapt. Yeah, so, not gonna... so people were, you know, truck drivers, automated truck driving, automated Ubers and Lyfts. Um, people were not so concerned about that. They were more excited about it. But now that it's coming for maybe radiologists, maybe actors, maybe writers, yeah. people are concerned. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank, Thank you, Reed. Thank you. Appreciate it.